aircraft making a condensation trail is very similar in many ways to when you go outside on a cold day and exhale, you create a condensation trail. That little cloud is a condensation trail. Now, if you take a two-mile walk on a cold day, and you can turn around, and you can see your condensation trail tracking all the way back for two miles, that's how crazy it is to think that what we're looking in the sky is actually condensation trails. The contrails, not the chemical, the contrails occur because of cold air, minus 30. It takes a high altitude, around 30,000 feet plus. There's a carbon dioxide and water vapor in that exhaust. That turns to ice crystals, and that's what you see, the white stream behind it. Those white crystals of ice warm up, dissolve, and the smoke goes away. And it never lasts more than a minute. What we're seeing now, and I first could not believe it, and I started looking at the skies, and these are not normal. They're not natural. There's something going on. I don't know who it is or why they're doing it. All I can testify is it's not natural and it's not normal. Rosalind Peterson is an environmental impact analyst and founder of California Skywatch. Today, Rosalind is a leader in the fight to expose the true nature of the chemicals being sprayed in our skies. She has compiled extensive data documenting the ongoing geoengineering and weather modification programs contaminating our skies, water, and food supply. My name is Rosalind Peterson, and I was born and raised in Mendocino County in California. I was on a working farm in Mendocino County and uh, grew up on a working farm. So I have a background in agriculture. I could drive a cat tractor. I could do the irrigation systems. I decided to take environmental studies and planning course at Sonoma State University where I got my degrees. After some training, I became an agriculture crop loss adjuster, which meant that if there were any crops that and failed in California rise. for any oh, reason, so crop loss adjusters were, were sent by the state of California to go investigate where these crop losses you, were a, and why there were crop losses throughout the state. So I was traveling about 50,000 miles a year in this process from county to county, assessing what pass. kind of crops, uh, what kind of damage they had, and looking into the reasons for the failure itself and how much value the crop was that, that was lost okay, at so that particular time. Left on my and then if there was a crop loss that was legitimate, then ranchers or farmers could be paid crop insurance. Here. Uh, for the this loss is of their crops. Nano In 98, I began to notice materials. just a little bit of tree today. decline on the property here. I began to is. notice that some trees didn't look as healthy, and I, and I started to worry about that. Just in the background is something that was nagging because I was concerned about losing the beautiful trees we have around here.